Hello everyone and thank you for watching. My name is Dr. Ryan Hall and I'm excited to share our work discussing the use of thromboelastography to identify distinct coagulation profiles in patients with peripheral and coronary artery disease undergoing lower extremity revascularization and how these profiles correlate with postoperative thrombosis. The cornerstone in thrombosis prevention following revascularization is thromboprophylaxis with anticoagulant and antiplatelet medications. Unfortunately, guiding literature remains mixed and recommendations sparse, owning in large part to the heterogeneous nature of this patient population. This is where TAG can help. Thromboelastography provides comprehensive information regarding an individual's coagulation profile. The addition of platelet mapping provides insight into the contribution of platelet reactivity to overall clot strength and measures the effect of antiplatelet medications such as aspirin and Plavix. So, the question becomes, do patients with different risk factors, such as concomitant CAD, have distinct coagulation profiles? Can TAG distinguish these profiles, and do they correlate with postoperative thrombosis? To this end, we conducted a prospective study of patients with PAD undergoing lower extremity revascularization. We obtained serial TAG-PM samples, both preoperatively and up to six months. We then compared the TAG profiles of patients with CAD to those without, as well as the occurrence of postoperative major adverse limb events and their associated TAG-PM profiles. 114 patients were included in this analysis, 28% had a history of CAD. Those with CAD were more likely to be male, have a history of atrial fibrillation, be on full-dose anticoagulation, and less likely to be on dual antiplatelet therapy. TAG-PM analysis found that patients with CAD demonstrated a longer time to clot formation, as well as greater platelet aggregation and less platelet inhibition. 27 patients experienced a major adverse limb event, and TEG-PM samples taken prior to the event demonstrated increased platelet aggregation and decreased platelet inhibition as demonstrated by this histogram. The red bars indicate samples from patients with CAD, and the red symbols indicate a thrombotic event. The blue bars and symbols indicate the same for patients without CAD. We believe this analysis contributes several important findings. TEG-PM was able to identify hypercoagulable profiles in patients with CAD reflected in increased platelet aggregation and decreased platelet inhibition, a finding also reflected in those who experience thrombotic events. This difference in coagulation profiles may reflect divergent medical therapy with more anticoagulation and less dual antiplatelet therapy in patients with CAD, potentially a result of higher rates of atrial fibrillation. All this suggests that patients with CAD and PAD may be at higher risk for postoperative thrombosis and that dual antiplatelet therapy may help lower this risk. Ultimately, however, all patients with PAD have unique risk factors that make the standard one-size-fits-all approach to thromboprophylaxis ineffective, and it is the goal of our lab to demonstrate the ability of TEG-PM to guide thromboprophylaxis and reduce postoperative thrombosis.